Hello, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to the stream. Today we're doing some GitHub in the terminal. Let's go. So I'm excited for this one. Uh, I have a workflow right now and I spend a lot of time on github.com and there are some great tools out there that will require me to not have to do that anymore and to spend probably 90% of my time or more and stay in the terminal and not have to leave. Uh, and so we're going to do some integrations today. Uh, I'll show you guys a couple of cool projects that I've been using. And then we're going to add some custom shortcuts and maybe you guys can help me. I would love some help uh, thinking about how to key bindings and how to, you know, do all that kind of stuff to, to make it feel kind of intuitive and helpful. Um, so yeah, this is going to be fun. Uh, please say hi. If you're in chat, say hi. Um, if I know you. Hey, what's going on? So glad you're here. This is going to be a good time. We're going to have fun. Um, so I'm just sort of, I just finished dinner, so I'm just sort of getting settled in here. Got some stuff in version control ahead of time, so we don't have to mess with that right now. I've got a couple cool AI things that I want to show you as well, so that'll be cool. I don't know if anyone's playing around with Copilot and tools like that, but uh, I have been messing with a lot of AI, and so I'm sure that's going to trickle into this conversation. No time like the present, eh? Hey, what's up, default? Default's here. All right, let's see. All right. Little comfy UI. Anyone do a image image AI generation? I've been messing with that as well. That's been fun. Um, so let's start fresh, I guess. We'll um, let's just kill Tmux and start fresh. So I kind of get this out of the way. Right now, I use a tool, uh, a couple of tools actually. Uh, let's talk about them. GH Dash is written by my buddy Dolov. Shout out to Dolov. Um, and in a couple days, I have an interview coming out uh, with me and him talking about his Tmux workflow and NeoVim workflow. Um, so check that out. Uh, but this is a very cool uh, Go Lang based. Uh, we call these TUIs. So they're like terminal UIs. Um, and you have the ability to view PRs. Um, you can create custom filters to create like multiple tabs. So we might mess with that some today. Um, and then of course there's commands that we can write off of this. So that's my current plan is to work on how do we add commits to, or how do we add comments? How do we open pull requests? How do we, you know, create new tickets? Um, so all sorts of stuff like that is what we're going to start configuring today. Um, so if you want to play along you can if you're on your computer with me you can you can set these things up the same way if you'd like um, and I'm gonna push all the work we do today to my dot files so I'll be sure um, to send that your guys way so for those that 
haven't seen this. Sort of all the things that make my terminal setup work. And I have, I have used this some, and so the idea between now and the end of this stream is like, how do I use it all the time and make it my new default place to do all of my GitHub work? Um, the one thing I wasn't sure about is notifications. So there'll be a couple things that I just, I don't know if they exist yet. I would love notifications to exist. So maybe we can play around with that um, by extending GH dash, but I'm not sure we'll have enough time today to do that. Let's see, notifications. Yeah, that would be cool. Elev agrees a year ago. All right, so custom sections are coming. But it's written in Golang. I know Golang, at least I can I can be dangerous with it. So we'll see if, if we end up exploring any of the source code today. Um, and you know, you guys might know me if you watch my YouTube videos. Um, I like the overly minimal look. So I may try to simplify some of the UI um, just to be more, more basic, more kind of minimalist, uh, but we'll see. Uh, and then the next piece of it, and the biggest thing to do today is uh, octo.invim. This is a NeoVim plugin. This is the one I'm going to recommend, and I've been using it. It's, it's really good. Uh, you can list issues, which is similar to what we're doing with the other tool. But more importantly, you can like edit your issues inside of TMUX, or inside of uh, NeoVim, sorry. Um, and so all sorts of stuff like that. watching commits, changes, et cetera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From custom scripts. Oh, interesting. Yeah, feel free to share more about that if you want. Um, but Octo is really great. So Octo has a lot. I mean, check out all the things that it can do. Um, issues, we can reopen things. PRs, we can edit PRs. We can create, close diffs. Uh, will be useful for me. I, that's the one. One of the things that I want to do better at is is get NeoVim diffing working. Uh, of course, repo stuff, labels, um, and so there's going to be some line between what can Octo do and what can GH Dash do. And so Octo is for NeoVim, so it's going to be a lot of code editing specific things, um, and then GH Dash is more what are the views I want and what, how do I want to you know interact with those two tools together. Um, so I already have them set up. So we're just going to use dot files as an entry point. So if I hit command G um, and I can cast caster, maybe I don't have it on my new computer, but uh, if I hit command G, I can see this, uh, which is lazy git. And if I hit command shift G, I can see GH dash. So this is the tool. We can see it, it already has some decent defaults, like uh, my pull requests, things that need my review, things that I'm involved in. Um, and then on the other side, we have my issues, issues assigned to me, and then issues that I'm involved in. So from what I can tell, it just uses this search bar, um, which if you use GitHub, you know, this is kind of how it works. You create this sort of key colon value type format and you can do at signs to mention users specifically um, at me of course is an alias for yourself you can use the minus sign so in this case we can see these are what i'm involved in but not the author of which is different than i think my issues are technically the ones i've authored um, so those are the discrepancies and i do have a couple of things like i can hit uh, I can hit E and you're going to see it's not working. And that's because uh, we're going to probably do this first. I have to map my repos with the GH tool. Um, so config, it like wants us to map all of our repo paths to the GH dash tool. Um, and so I'm not a huge fan of having to do this by hand. But for today, we are going to have to do a few things like dot files. 
So that repo is repos slash dot files, right? So that one's easy. Um, and then tmux smart. This is where it gets kind of fun. It's like, how much of this do I have to do manually and how much can I automate? So the question now, close that, is can we like repo pass Matt. All right, arguments. Oh, using the config. All right, so that's cool. So this is useful because when we go to run the commands against NeoVim, we can map to it. So this might be my path. So everything with that starts with that. And then I guess I will overwrite. OK, so this is a good starting point for me. So I put everything in repos. Utility. All right, so that's a good starting point. And then I know that my tmux plugins are another important place where I'm going to be messing with all this. So yeah, we will take a handful of these and for now let's see if it lets me repeat it config tmux plugins thing must be unique darn okay so that one won't work <laughs> Is that what I call it? Config tmux smart session tmux manager smart tmux session manager and then we've got our tmux let's just do it here tmux nerd font window name and that is this one all right so that's my starting point uh must be unique so we'll get rid of that you were talking about this one okay let's see uh hey vadit thanks man i appreciate the shout out we're just messing with the terminal today. It's going to be fun. Um, you guys will like what we're about to do right after this. Uh, let's see. So you were telling me that if we go to a specific issue, this is you. Hey, look at that. OK. so. The one thing that I wanted from this plugin, and I don't know if this, suggesting, okay. So my only thought right now is like, when I open it right now, I do command G and lazy git opens to this project. So I kind of want like command shift G to open up like GH dash with this project. And I want to like automatically filter by the project I'm in. So this is my dot files. So I want to see all my dot files stuff. That's, that's kind of what I would prefer, but I guess for now I could get used to it. Cause when I think about it, all my projects are here, especially issues. It's like my, my smart team accession manager and my nerd font plugin, like these two things, they're two different projects. I don't want to have to filter by them manually every time. Uh, so that is something that I'm thinking about as I kind of do this, but like, let's see right now, if I hit E, it will open up NeoVim in a Tmux pop-up and this is now editable. 
I can now add to this. And if I save it um, and we go to this uh, project, we can see add to this got, got added automatically. So that's pretty cool. Um, so that's, that's one thing that I kind of want to do. Um, we can quit that. And so as of right now, I only have a couple of um, plugins that work. So this is, I have B for branch. I'm going to show you guys this one in a few minutes. This one's really cool. Um, e for edit and I for insert. So if we go back to like T smart team accession manager, if I do I here, issues I've been involved for I, it will insert, do not use a template. Yeah, and so now it starts the prompt. So at least we know for now, well, look, this one's Tmux nerd font window name. So that's kind of the difficulty I was talking about. So we can uh, cancel. So I guess I have to have the one that I want selected. And then if I hit I, it'll use the repo path of the one that I have selected. So that's the, uh, that's the main idea here is how do I make that better? Um, so we will sort of see if there is a way in which when I open it, can I open it with an argument? So that's the question I have gh-config, use a config file. If not, it uses that. So what I kind of want to know is like, can I pass a specific flag to the plugin so that I can path to file? Uh, that's a config. Right. So he's saying just create different configs at the same time. The other thing I can immediately think of, and I'm going to start taking notes, I think, is um, if if I, we're going to make multiple configs, we'll probably want to share code. So I probably want to figure out if we can import or include uh, YAML code from one place to the next, because that's supported in a lot of libraries. So I may need to ask him if, if that's something to think about. And then From my understanding of the GitHub CLI, you can absolutely like, all right, let's go the other direction. Let's just show you guys the other side of this. So if we go to NeoVim and I do space, I have O for Octo. I have issue PR prefix. Uh, so we do issue and then we can do L for list. And this will list all of the issues that are open in the PR that I'm in. So so some of me is like, why use GH dash if this thing is going to be more specific? Like this just is always going to work. So like in this case, I want to create a um, check health command. I've been working on this, but in this case, I can open it up. Um, and so now it kind of becomes a, what are the key bindings? Are they like intuitive right now? Or do I need to change them to something more helpful? Um, those are the questions I'm asking myself. Um, but I have made a couple of issues that we can definitely play around with as a sample. See, it's open. So it's like, can I close it? Can I change this? Yeah, I can change the title. This is the issue number. So this is like a virtual thing. Yeah, so see, I'm already working on health. Uh, check health. Cool. All right. So let's just go to today. People want to see my life. It's my little note taking app. I'm going to move this over here. GitHub in the terminal, let's go. All right, so we're gonna do some mapping. We're gonna do some, learn some keyboard shortcuts. gh-config lets us overwrite if we want to. All 
pre-built path. All right, and so I've started using some of this already. Issue number, theme, layout, right, authors, sweet. There was a ton of stuff going on over here. I forgot, where is it? Keyboard, usage commands. Let me know if you guys have any other ideas with how this could be working. I don't know if any of you are, are any of you using Octo or GH Dash. Um, Sanix, I know that you, you submitted an issue, so clearly you've been messing with it. Um, do you have any advice so far on how it's going for you? Um, or anything that you, you could add to all of this. Let's see. Okay, so he's got space keys, space leader keys added. So like assignee, okay. So if we just space A, add assignee. So it's not really super obvious. I'm wondering if I can do my telescope key maps, if we can see like a sign. So that one's kind of useful. Add assignee, remove assignee. So that is one way in, so I can play out configure. Oh no, this is me. You can assign anybody in the whole world, look at that. Probably would be good to know what this was about. Did it not like my default prompt? Something to look at. All right. Okay, sweet. So you like it. That's awesome. So you're saying it's really great. You've been using it for some time now. Very cool. Um, formatting maybe. Yeah. So octo.invim, I guess the question right now is like in GH dash, can you like, I guess I don't know what all the commands are yet. You can refresh, you can switch views. I, I can like open, assign. So you can do stuff like assigning. Yeah. you can, so like this one I could assign and it gives me this little prompt. Interesting. So it's like a fake Vim prompt. Oh, but submit control D. Okay. So at least he shows them like they're like obvious. Well, I don't really want to assign myself, but we get the idea. Uh, and then with this comment, it's a bummer it doesn't show me the URL because it's it has a URL in the comment. Um, this is my other one. So it no checks to display. My checks are here. I may have to zoom out a little uh, just so that I can get a little bit more context. We can diff, we can check out, we can close, we can say it's ready for review. We can merge it. Oh, sweet, you can merge it in here. How does that, I keep it in queue. Yeah, that's cool. So you can decide what you're gonna do and very cool. So let's control C that. And if I say ready for review. Oh, uh, well that's usually what ready for review is just when we flag it. Here, I don't know if it hurts your guys' eyes. We can switch to dark mode. It's still daytime here. So my, the, most of my apps are in, are in light mode during the day. Uh, all right. Well, I guess the first one was, is this going to work? So the mapping isn't going to be specific. In this case, this is the wrong mapping. I already know this, so I, I guess, do I have to do all of this in, this sucks. I don't wanna have to do it this way, but 
it's going to be like this underscore is it an underscore repos let's go to repos no it's a dot com all right so then why does this not work issues well i guess i'm just going to start by doing the one i want the most which is i want to create a new tmux window and I want that new window to open a pull request automatically. So like I want to, I, for the sake of today, I'll just review my own, but I want to add a R is for refresh. So what is the language? The code review language is, let me see files changed. We can review. So I'll just have to decide what if I want to overwrite some bindings, maybe capital S for like start review. That's fine. Uh, we're going to stick to dot files. I'm going to close all this out because I'm a little, a little bit lost right now. And GH dash. All right. So then we'll do that. Let's just, let's just do something useful now. I know we've gone for a few minutes now and we're just kind of, learning about the tool and trying to figure it out. So I originally have it set up to do a display pop-up, which is cool. Like it's very cool, uh, I will say. So if I want to like look at this issue and I want to like look at it and, and make sense of it, um, I have E, right? So E is like edit. So we do this and we hit E and it pulls it up in the pop-up. Um, and when I close the buffer, it closes NeoVim and it goes back to what I was doing previously. Um, so all good things. Let's do the same with a pull request. So I think I'm going to be better off issues, PRs, issues, so we just duplicate this and we'll do S and we'll do repo path and we'll do, I guess it's going to look something similar to this one, but instead of issues edit, we're going to do, I've already done it before. I wonder if pull review start, we will just review start and then you give it the, the thing. So review, start, issue number, and instead of display pop-up, I will probably just do something I do here. So inside of Tmux, I have my key binding set to here. So this is new window. We'll do new window. Let's see. Let's see what happens. All right. So I've got my pull request. I hit capital S and it crashes. All right. That's fine. We'll probably, we'll probably have to change some flags or something. Oh yeah. Like width and height isn't going to work right. If we do, if we do it the other way, but it crashes. S command display pop-up repo path. Well, that won't work, will it? We need the actual pull requests. PR, what are the var variables? PR number, there we go. That will definitely cause an issue. So let's see. No octo buffer found. No octo buffer found. Okay, bummer. Octo review start PR number. Repo path. This should be valid, but let's make sure that we get this right. So there's our command. 
will be in the repo path. Make sure we have, let's start with this one. Nope. This is why we're doing it together. <laughs> I thought this would be an interesting problem to solve. And I, I've been waiting for a while to do this. I want my coworker to say, hey, I assigned you to something and I go, okay, great. I'll just go check my needs, my review and I'll push a button and I'll immediately be able to start reviewing it. Um, so we'll, we'll get there here soon. So if this is just straight up crashing, this is issue number 45. So if we go here, Octo ish uh, view start 45 and it sure enough, yeah. So view start review why start 45. Why would it complain? The selected command, there's some sort of telescope error. I'm not pulling up telescope though to do this. No octo buffer found. The other way to do this, or the other way to test this is just getting the request URL, so we can do the whole URL instead of just the issue number, and we can do octo start review, and then we give it the whole thing. Octo review start. Was it review? Review start. Review start. Yeah, that's it. So then the second way of us doing this is PR list and opening it. Oh, so from my knowledge, you have to, my use of this so far, you have to have this buffer open and then after that, you have to so you open this and then you do octo start so like here octo start review start and it starts it so the question is why why do you have to do it in that order and how do i do it in a different order can i just give it like can i just give it the review beforehand I don't know, maybe I just use Octo for a while for all things related to doing, but like issues, issues, search, yeah. I know you can just straight up start it. Well, yeah, so it's not intuitive. Octo is just a lot. Um, there's a lot of functionality in here. Like we could look at the source code as can it tell me more it's a lot of code is my point there's a lot of code there's a lot of features if i was to just do it in one place i think it works super super well i think if i wanted to just view it that's probably what i have to do for this feature so fine i guess i want to like Do I want to do this? All right, so we've got O for open in GitHub. Maybe I'll just say like capital O is open in NeoVim. That's easy enough. We can do that right now. So O is going to, instead of review, we just octo PR view i think it, it's i think it's view we're gonna find out here pr
list. I guess that's it. So now, if I just hit O, capital O, sure enough, oh, it filters it. All right, so can I open it? Reopen, edit. That's what we want. We're getting there, people. We're getting there. What did I say? Edit. And then you just specify it. So for now, this will work. So we should do this. And we can do capital O for open. And it opens it up. And I can do my octo things. Um, but I, I do want to go the direction I mentioned earlier, which is I don't want this to be a pop-up. I really want this to be its own window. Um, so we decided new window. I'm behind. Oh, well, very nice. Let's update it. That shouldn't take but a second. Um, do you know the easiest way to update it? GH dash update. I guess the way in which it gets downloaded. So is there like a GH extensions update? That's why, because I upgrade. Can I upgrade all? GH dash upgrade, let's go. All right, so we got two minor versions, very nice. Is there anything worth mentioning on these? Any Anything good in the updates? You know what? I was just talking to my friend about this. It is very, very helpful to watch releases for things that you care about in GitHub. So watch custom releases. That's really the only one that matters to me. I guess security alerts sometimes for if it's like a something you're using in production. But this is just com terminal stuff. So we've got nerd font fixes. That nerd font fixes. I want nerd font fixes. Uh, remove footer. Ability to prompt confirmation before, and then some dependency updates. Okay, sweet. This is awesome. All right, thanks for the call out. So I actually, I think I'm gonna make myself a little update script. And we, what did we say? This is gh extension upgrade all tpm update. Builder update, Fisher update. I have all these package tools. So coming to a video or live stream near you, I hope to have a U script. And when I run the U script, it updates every sort of dependency that's in my terminal setup. Uh, that would be super dope. We will see how long it gets me to start that script. Um, I have one specifically for um, brew. But that's only some of my packages, right? In this case, I, I didn't even remember that this existed. Um, it's also the only GitHub extension I use. So if anyone else knows of a better, not better, but like if there are other GitHub extensions for the CLI that, that you like, uh, feel free to share them because I, I always like finding useful terminal based, you know, productivity scripts or whatever. All right. Let's see it in all its goodness. Look at that, that they got fixed. These icons were all messed up. Now they're better. It's looking crispy. I like it. Uh, so I guess we'll open it and it's sure enough, it's going to crash. I think I got to remove these four things and let's find out if that is enough. No. Okay. So we will try to run this. Edit. Oh, that won't work. What do we say? This is 45. I think we said 45. T 
smart, T smart, 45, so 45. And the path is here. And it just doesn't work. So new window. You give it a function and you give it right. So new window. The start directory is dash C. Is that what we're doing? I don't get this. Why do why do people do this? Uh, I'm going to have a, a moment of ranting. So it's dash C in new window, but if you do display pop up, display pop up, it's dash D. I don't, maybe dash C was target clients. Okay, so they just have some, they have some conflicts and they can only use letters of the alphabet for so many things. Okay, that's fine. It is what it is. So then that's that, right? That's literally all we got to deal with? No. Why you don't want to work? So this is C. Unknown flag exit. Okay, so this is another one. I think I already do it in my Tmux. This one's dash in. Is it dash in? Main Tmux. I'm telling you guys, you don't need an internet connection to do most of this kind of stuff, aside from dealing with GitHub, yes. Uh, but the manual is so good at, at telling you everything you need. And there are manuals for pretty much every major kind of project that, that pops up in, the, in terminal land. So what did we use? Here we use dash in. Dash in was for the name of the window. I don't know if it needs a window name. And from the last time I checked, when you quit a window, it should just exit. So let's, I guess we'll test it. We're not giving it a name yet. We might have to. Yes, that was it. That was it, folks. All right, so dash C. Dash C. Dash C. Get rid of that. So this is cool. If anyone was paying close attention, this is pretty helpful. You can run invim. Um, and I have some really helpful commands, like uh, invim plus go to file and this automatically runs telescope with the find files command so all i've done is lazy lua i've created this little argument that is called go to file uh, or it's a command sorry so this command is called go to file and it runs telescope find files there's another one here called go to command and it runs telescope commands and then i love this one i just added this i just called it grep is the name of the command so it's telescope live grep and so it's sort of in com combination with a, a fish abbreviation and so if i do um we have to go to the bottom this is kind of weird but when it works it works super well so i have this abbreviation for grep and so grep will always run invim plus grep, which is the, the grep command on invim. But what happens here is it's going to do colon grep. And if I hit enter colon grep, it's going to open live grep in neovim. And if I'm in neovim, I can do the same thing, colon grep, enter, and it also opens live grep. Um, and so the fun part about this, if people have watched my videos for a while, you'll, you might know this or you might have seen this, but I really like macOS key bindings. 
Um, and so uh, let's go back to dot files and let's uh, alacrity. I have command F, so let's just find it, command F literally always just runs grep and hits enter. So when I'm in a project, let's go to T smart. If I'm here, I can hit command F and it pull, pulls up grep. Uh, if I'm inside of Vim, I can hit command F and it also pulls up grep. So if you are a Mac user, using the command key is so simple. It's so fast. It's it just, it's what we do anyway. I do the same with command P for find files and command shift P for commands. So that's a little tip for you that I have found invaluable for me. Um, I don't like the prefix key. When I do this, uh, I, I, I don't use the prefix key. It's not, it's not necessary for me. Um, so everything you see me doing is a command key of some kind. Uh, and let's go back. All right, so that's my rant on that. But this is working, this is good. So this is our ability to open up. Okay, so now let's do our final test. So I should be able to hit Command O, it opens up in a new terminal, and it opens up this, yes. But I'm noticing my, my icon here isn't changing, so that's interesting. Um, and then I do O, P, R, what do I do? Octo, P, B, paste, issue, P, R, review. So R is review, and then I can start a review. So it's not, it's not super, uh, it's just not very um, intuitive for me. So the question I have is like, that command thing we just did, like if we go here, go to file, I mean, check this out, there it is, telescope, find files. So the question now is, do I even wanna go through the effort of memorizing leader keys? Do I have to do leader space O, R, you know, P, R, R, S to start a review, or do I just want to have some sort of simple key binding or command that I can fuzzy? I guess with even with Octo, I can just uh, start review. I think that's enough. Octo. Review. Resume. All right, resume. So that's the way it works. Part of me thinks that I could get away with having the octo command built into something much simpler. Let's do that. All right. You guys are thinking, helping me think this through. Um, feel free to, you guys are being a little quiet, so feel free to, to share any of your thoughts. Um, I guess, I guess most people are just observing and that's okay. Um, and so here's what I want to do. We haven't gone here yet, but I have, um, my, all my, uh, NeoVim plugins here. They all are. I have octo, and I've begun to map out all of this. So we've been talking about mappings. Here's all the custom mappings. Um, so I, I pasted in all of the defaults just to help me like tweak and change and understand all the settings. Um, but at the bottom here, I have my which key set up and I have, let's register P with R and let's call this plus review. That should help. Just lurking, Jesse. All right. Well, we're glad you're here, man. Lurk away. Um, so I don't have, all right, this is my point. I don't really have an O. I don't want to do all this all the time. I just feel like it's a lot like, Oh, I got to do space. O. I something it just seems like a lot uh it seems like a lot to me okay now the lurkers are coming out i see how it is guys i see how it is um we're just gonna do this so i might add that we just want to say octo 
this I can deal with. This I can get really used to and do a lot of. Yes, 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 yes. All right, so let's just, uh, every now and then I like to just kind of restart things when I have a lot going on. Um, so we can open it. Great, it's been opened. Now I can just space OO and I can search for whatever it is I want to do. So if I'm going to resume it, I'm going to resume it. If I'm going to, yeah, that feels really good. Uh, because I just, I wasn't using it guys. I wasn't, I wasn't using Octo because I was like, I don't remember all these commands. They're just crazy. Uh, but what I was going to say about Octo is if we go to the Octo issues and we look at the ones that Josh has made, we see I've made one and we see that I've asked, can we please when I run Octo, I want to see a list of built-in commands available to run. So I already, I already thought this through and the, someone was very like, shout out, shout out to, uh, Liam. Let's give all the shout out to Liam confetti for Liam. Thank you, Liam. Uh, he added this like in June. Um, and so this is, this is my, my entry point into it. And so if I want to, um, uh, review this card. I can say all pending comments will be deleted. Are you sure? Yes, I can get rid of stuff. So this is really helpful. I think this is what's going to actually work for me. Um, you guys can borrow this if you want. Um, I might as well just show you. We're not going to mess with that right now. We are going to feature add simple helpful octo leader key binding okay so this guy is my entry point in um and let's just uh, octo So this is, this is your place. If you just, if you don't want to use GH dash, or you just want to sort of get used to this and, and get it to work, uh, then this is totally, this is totally the way to do it. Um, I did have an idea and my idea is, do I want to automatically, this is a little bit nerdy, but I think you guys might like it. Now that I sort of have this set up this way, do I want to set up alacrity? to decrease its font size so that I can have really clear and obvious like side by side. So let's, let's just, let's just do this. Let's go bigger. Let's oh, say that we're going to open this and I go, great. I'm going to start a review. So we'll start. Do I want to do this so that I can like, I, I don't know if it's going to be helpful with a markdown file, but, um, like zoom out so that I can do what I'm going to do and then zoom back in when I'm done. That's the question. I don't know if you guys have, I guess when I stream, I like to give you guys a decent font size, but, um, I, I don't always keep it this small when I'm working, but when I do this, I definitely have to. So right now it's sort of a zoom in and out. So my question is file type. Can I, it thinks it's a shell file type. So that's not great. So if you want to know the file type in Vim, you can run this command set file type question mark, and it'll tell you. So this is just a generic octo panel, which isn't really what I wanted. Um, so maybe not, M maybe we won't go down that path today. Um, it's, we're coming up at the hour here, so I may or may not do more. Uh, it's kind of up to you guys if there's something interesting that you think you'd want to see. Um, I'm definitely open to doing something more with this, um, but I really just wanted to, let's do these separately. So we will 
map to more repos and we will create key binding to open in VR in Octo. Cool. And we'll just be playing around with emojis. All right, so those are pushed for those that want to see it. Let's see. Creating pull requests is the next most important thing for me. So is that just a matter of create? I think it, that's all it is. So now if I'm like, here and I want to say new branch. Let's rename that. So sample octo push. We're going to have to actually change something though, I think. Read me. So, like, let's, I don't know. I guess I'm not using sleeve anymore so i can get rid of that um, i'll give you guys a few more tips while we're here so i have all of these uh gets like get information up at the top and this is a tmux status bar and this is called gitmux and so it shows me my branch name how many files have changed in this case this is there's an untracked file so there's an OLS file, which I don't really want, but that's, that's what that was. And then one deletion, right? So one file changed, one line deleted. And you'll see here, if I like add a bunch of lines, um, it's gonna auto format them for me. Of course it is. So my code editor is just too helpful for me today. Um, but if like, I don't know, we added a hundred of these, we're gonna see that the get status will show a hundred new lines. So it's very, it's very handy at showing me how many lines I have to deal with right now. Um, how many files that are changed. If there are new files, how many of, the, of those there are. Um, and then I can hit um, angle bracket. So if you're familiar with the angle bracket, you can do things like I wanna view uh, the previous reference, the previous buffer, previous diagnostic, previous error, previous hunk is a really good one. So git hunks, I can actually jump to. So if I do angle bracket forward and then G, that will send me to this git hunk, which is very, very handy for me. Um, and then I have a bunch of different things. One of them I, I haven't shown you yet, uh, but I did earlier was space G. And so space G, space is my leader key. Um, G lets me do things like blame. I can diff. I can stage, which I use quite a bit. Um, I can stage either the hunk of where the cursor is, or I can decide I want to hunk the whole file with capital G. Um, I can also decide that I want to go to the previous buffer, which I don't use that one too much, but I do use undo stage buffer a lot and, and um, reset hunk. So like if I'm at a line of code and I say, <laughs> I don't want to do this anymore. Like I changed my mind. I can do space GX and it'll reverse uh, that hunk. Um, you do have to be careful though, because those things are, I have undo history set up in NeoVim. So my files are all tracked locally with history, but generally um, get actions like that are permanent. You can't really, it's not easy anyway to undo that kind of stuff. So just, just be mindful of that. Um, so we'll do that. Uh, I guess I'm not, I'm going to say that this is a jet brains mono nerd font and we'll go back. And so now it's going to say, I can do like, Oh, unknown word. Okay. We can add that to my dictionary. Now I can do space G G to commit that hunk and I can go down here and space GG and that will stay, sorry, stage the hunk. Um, and now I can do just do command GC, which is just a really quick way of opening lazy git and knowing that I want to commit what I just staged. So I can do stages inside of NeoVim and then I can just come here 
Um, I, I have been playing with, uh, what is it called? There's a really popular um, Git tool. Git? NeoGit is a really popular tool that like you can um, NeoGit lets you like see staged files. So this one's cool. This we can see is staged. And I don't remember help, help. You can hit C to commit. And that creates a little buffer, which I do like sometimes. Um, I've, I've been messing around with it. It should be, it should abort, yeah. Um, but what I prefer is I like C for a quick, a quick thing, which LazyGit has this new uh, description section in here. That's pretty ha handy. Um, but I also have, a f so I can say like capital C. So uh, capital C will open it in a Git editor. And I have this NeoVim plugin that shows me the diff because um, this isn't shown by default. And so you have to add a plugin to do that. And so this will show me the diff of all the files changed. And I'm using null ls. So I can get conventional commit autocomplete in my Vim, uh, my git commit buffer. Uh, so very cool. It took a little while to put all these pieces together. I'm thinking of making a blog post or a video more about kind of how this stuff comes together. Um, but I can just say like docs, right? So docs, um, and this is update font and remove sleeve. So let's give this a try. Sample Octopush. And we will chore update dictionary. We'll push that as well. And so there are there I would maybe want to do it here. So I hit O and O currently pulls up uh, an arc window. So this is a preview window from my browser. I use a browser called Arc and it lets me start doing all the things. Um, but what I want is to hit O here and run Octo. So we know that it's Octo PR create. So I think we could just do it. So let's just let's just go for it. So lazy git. I think I have to application support lazy git uh, key. So we can look at the defaults. Open PR pull create pull request. So we're going to say, oh, actually, let's see what are pull request options. The default branch, the selected branch. Oh, I don't, I don't really ever use that. I always push to the same place. So we're gonna say that's O, we'll get rid of that. And then the create the custom command. So this will be our new one. And this will be O, and the context is branches, and the loading text is opening octo. And the question now is, can I just do this? Octo What did we say? PR creates. Local branches. Local branches. That was handy. So I have YAML I have a YAML uh, LSP set up with NeoVim. So if someone has defined rules on their YAML config files, it can inherit those rules and read them in, in the editor, which is, which is super cool. So I don't know, let's just do it. All right, so we're here. We want to, I think I want to get rid of that. So if I hit angle bracket G as a reminder, I can jump to the thing I want to do. Actually, I guess I'll leave it there. Um, and then we will feature add and change 
lazy get o to actually we don't even know if it works yet so maybe we maybe we don't get ahead of ourselves oh base repo type number and hit enter select base repo okay so how do we let the base repo be set automatically is it like a directory thing maybe, maybe it is um, base let's see what was the what was the actual thing select base repo all right so we want to say like select repo has someone else run into this error with review start let's see can't reproduce this issue Well, we know that feature exists. Okay, so maybe I'm missing something. It's not the end of the world to just pick the base repo. Enter title. Oh, this is all Octo, isn't it? So Octo is going to say um, update Octo on main using my branch. Create the branch. PR, sure. Okay, so this is their prompt. I don't love it, but I don't hate it either. The great thing is once you've created the PR, you can then you can then do what you want with the description afterwards. It's not really that big of a deal. Um, can I actually see the commits? Maybe not. Hmm. Okay, but that's something. That is something. <laughs> is what I'll say. Uh, I wonder if I can like add a label, sweet, so I can say that this is a feature. What is it? Enhancement. Assign. I love this, guys. This is much better. Space O O lets me run any potential command. Chef's kiss. Yes, this is what I want. Um, I also want to merge this. So PR merge is not mergeable. Oh, shoot. Why is it not mergeable? I guess we can URL, PR URL. Oh, it puts it on the clipboard. Interesting. Bypass branch protection. Oh, this is my fault. I don't know if you guys ever set rules on your branches. I must have set some sort of rule. Currently applies to a branch. Require signed commits, require linear history. Oh, did I not sign my commits? That must be it. I do recommend you sign your git commits if possible. It just adds an extra layer of security. Uh, clipboard. So. Yep, none of these are signed. So that's that's good. I'll go to my note taking app and I'll say uh, create sign commits. I uh, just recently bought an M2. Uh, I had an M1 MacBook and now I got an M2 MacBook and it is much faster. I bought a much higher chip. Uh, so it has been interesting to find out what little things I need to be doing that I wasn't doing before. 
uh, or things I, I don't have written down as these are all the things you got to do when you set up a new computer, um, especially for developers. Uh, that's definitely another problem. So uh, I think I'm going to end the stream here in a few minutes, but I will show you guys one final little AI tip for those that have stuck around the whole time. I appreciate you. Um, so if we go to back to GH dash and we decide, hey, I want to look at an issue. I want to create a new issue and I want to create a contributing.md file. Okay, cool. So we know that it's issue 17 and we know that the general description is we want to create this, 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 this contribution file. Cool. So what I have done is GHPRB, I have implemented the open AI as a CLI. So this, the, the kind of the root of all this is a command line that someone wrote where they're able to call the open AI API and then take the response. And I think they just use JQ. So they just parse the JSON response and they give us a simple little CLI interface to work with. And so this is what I've said. I've created context. So I just said, create a simple branch with the following issue content. Make sure to use title as the main focus and prepend the branch with jam. So I just use my initials uh, at the beginning of a branch name to identify that it's mine, um, especially for when I'm working with coworkers and there's lots of branches in the same repository. And then I say, okay, but I want you to put the issue number here. And then I want you to use dashes to separate the words and don't use more than five words. So I don't want a really long branch name. I want them to condense it down. Um, and then I say, uh, come up with, uh, and nothing else, no description, no spaces, no line breaks, like just give me the name of the branch. Because if you don't say this, apparently OpenAI is going to be like, here is the branch that, that we think is best for you. And then they give you the value. And you're like, no, don't do that. Just, just tell me what the value is. Um, and then I also may say like, never include the word title. Uh, or filler words like is and are so like little tiny words. I don't need those descriptive words in my branch name. And then I say, here's the content. And so the content of the issue comes from GitHub issues. So I just, I just dump all of the contents of the GitHub issue into this shell script. And then I use a little bit of spinners and I have a little prompt that pops up at the end. Um, and basically it will echo out the branch name onto uh, this branch name variable. And then I created a little pop-up, which we saw already. I'll show you how this works. It creates my branch name. And uh, you may go, well, Josh, why did you go through all this trouble? Like, couldn't you have coded this? And, oh, that's not right. Uh, yes, I could have coded it, but this took less than 10 minutes to write. Like I literally just wrote this out in 10 minutes. Well, I did the whole script in 10 minutes. I just said, this is what I want to do. And then I used a familiar CLI that I'm already used to and know, and I dumped the contents of the issue to this prompt and check this out. So we'll, we'll, I'll show you how it works. So I have an issue. I say, okay, I want to uh, do the contribution file. Now I hit capital B, AI spins only for a second. And now I have jam 17 create contributing MD file. And if I hit check out, it will check out main pull from upstream check out that branch. Um, and I think I've been having a couple issues with it not. Oh, yes. You can't check out a new branch when you have changes that are currently, uh, you have to have a clean working directory. So let's just do that. Feature add go to open a PR with Octo. We'll push that. We'll go back to contributing. We'll do B. So here's the branch name. Again, it only takes a second and then you hit check out. It checks everything out. It creates the branch and it does take a second for um, did it work. It did not work. Well, there goes live demos, right? The real question is, why would this be failing? Get. Get checkout main, get troll.
Oh, that wasn't right. Let's do that again. Hello. Cool. So this worked, but that didn't. Oh, I know why. Because I'm not in the branch that I'm using. So that's interesting. I may have to decide how I want to mess with that. So for those that aren't that are like, I don't know what you're talking about, Josh. All right, so let's, I'll show you. I was in dot files and then I opened this in the nerd font tool. And from what I can tell, I originally wrote this thinking tmux nerd font would be the thing I have open. And so I'm gonna guess if we run this generating branch name, it's going to play nice. Yeah. So it's, it's like it wasn't able to check out that branch because I wasn't in that project. So just something I guess I have to keep track of. And this is only like a penny or no, it's not even, it's like a fraction of a penny to run this request. Uh, so now if I go back, boom, okay. So that's why you have to be in the branch that you created the branch for in order to see this. <laughs> so it did work. It just was kind of out of, out of view for me. Um, but yeah, that's it. Pretty cool. Uh, I'm, I've been a big fan of this, all this AI stuff, as I said, and so it's been fun playing around. Um, but now I can edit PRs. I can do my thing here. I can uh, create new issues by hitting I, and I don't have a template here, so I can do thing. Do I want to use the contents of the current buffer? Yes, what happens? Oh, nothing happens. And then if I want to close, I can close an issue like that, and then comment add, add a comment, and I just want to say, just for testing, and open, close, view, uh, view. I guess it's one of those things that, ah, if I hit O, It opens it. Huh, okay. So now we see it's doing its thing. And then if I want to have the PRs, and if I want to open a PR, I can open it. And if I want to start a review, oh, I want to continue. No, what did we say? resume. I want to say it's something else, but yeah, it's easy to get to. It just takes a couple seconds. I don't think I'll mess with the resizing thing. That's just up to me. Um, and then review, what is it? Review, submit. I don't love the UI of some of this. Part of me wants to perhaps contribute to this because I mean look at this this is all kind of wonky and misaligned and not great so something something to be desired for sure um, but not having to be in the web browser and being able to do all of this in the command line is very cool and very fun um, so uh, I hope you guys had fun um, that is going to be it for me um, I don't see any questions popping up, so I'm going to assume that you guys are just continuing to lurk. Um, I appreciate you being here today. Um, a shout out to Sanix for sure for helping me with some of the GitHub stuff. And um, yeah, this is going to be recorded, so if you ever want to come back and, and see some of this, you can. And um, probably later this week, you'll see a, a little bit of a blog post going over some of what we talked about today. Um, but that's it. Uh, I'll see you guys next Wednesday. Um, thanks a lot. Bye. Have a good day, night, wherever you are.